Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we are discussing the lymphatic tissue which are broadly classified into primary and secondary lymphatic organs. First, we'll discuss the primary lymphatic organs that's the thymus. Thymus is a primary lymphoepithelial organ which contains only T lymphocytes. It is covered by a capsule which is thin connective tissue capsule. The capsule sends septas which is called trabeculae which divides the thymus into small lobules. The capsule and the trabeculae contain the blood vessels. The blood vessels doesn't enter into the lobules, they will be present only in the trabeculae and the capsule. Make sure you write the blue nuclei for the endothelium. Each lobule contains the outer cortex and inner medulla. The cortex contains a thymocytes, mainly the T lymphocytes. They are supported by a meshwork of epithelioreticular cells. The epithelioreticular cells, the name itself says, they are the reticular cells which provide us framework for the or support for the T lymphocytes and also has an epithelial nature means they have a cell junctions. There are six type of epithelioreticular cells, three types are present in the cortex, the three types are present in the medulla. The type 1 epithelioreticular cells are just beneath the capsule and trabeculae. They are connected by tight junctions, so which forms the blood thymic barrier. The type 2 epithelioreticular cells will support the lymphocytes. Type 3 is present at the junction of cortex and medulla and they form a barrier between the cortex and medulla. Type 4 is also present at the junction of cortex and medulla. Type 5 will support the lymphocytes in the medulla. Type 6 are nothing but the hazel corpuscles which we are going to discuss later. So in the cortex, the number of lymphocytes will be more. So the lymphocytes which are synthesized in the bone marrow migrate here during embryonic life and they are educated in the thymus. More than 98% of the T cells undergo apoptosis and they are phagocytosed by macrophages. So in the medulla, we will have very less number of lymphocytes. Medulla also contain a the type 6 epithelioreticular cells that, that they are nothing but hazel corpuscles. So they are hazel corpuscle, you have to write a pink dot in the center, the epithelial cells uh, in the center and surrounded by the epithelial like cells, like a flower you have to write. So you have to write those hazel corpuscles which are key in the thymus, in the medulla. You can see here the sim pink and epithelial surrounding there. You can write nuclei for those epithelial cells also. These are nothing but the supporting cells in the thymus. Now, the lymph node, which are the small bean shaped encapsulated lymphatic organ, the size may vary from 1 millimeter to centimeters. They serve as a filter for the lymph, which is coming from the lymphatic vessels. So it has an afferent lymphatics and an efferent lymphatic vessels. It is covered by a capsule which sends septas underneath they are called trabeculae. Beneath the capsule we have a small sinuses, sinuses not, nothing but the enlarged vessels. They are called subcapsular sinus beneath the capsule and just beneath the trabeculae they are trabecular sinuses. The cort it is divided into cortex and medulla. Cortex is again divided into superficial cortex. This contains lymphatic nodules. It can be a primary lymphatic nodule which contains just aggregation of the lymphocytes or secondary lymphatic nodules which contains a germinal center. Germinal center contains are they are lightly stained because they contains lymphoblast. The blast cells, the nuclei are lightly stained. They contain lymphoblast and also the plasma blast. As the lymphocytes are mature, they form a crown or corona around this lightly stained lymphoblast. 
so this constitute one lymphatic nodule surrounding the lymphatic nodules the lymphocytes will be scattered uh, make sure you don't put too many lymphocytes in the sinuses the subcapsular and trabecular sinus you can put few lymphocytes similarly you can write the other lymphatic nodules only in the superficial cortex make sure you write the lymphocyte as a round round structures because the nuclei that is represent the nuclei of the lymphocytes so these sinuses the trabecular or subcapsular sinuses are nothing but the vessels which are lined by epithelial cells which are connected by tight junction close to the trabeculae or the capsule whereas the epithelial lining towards the lymphocytes or the parenchyma is discontinuous so the macrophages uh, they send the processes inside the sinuses so that they can filter or track any uh, foreign particles or the tumor cells inside the sinuses the afferent lymphatic vessels drain into subcapsular sinus the sub subcapsular sinus will continues as a trabecular sinus and trabecular sinus will end up in medullary sinus medullary sinus continues with the efferent lymphatic vessels a deep to the lymphatic nodules you have a distri uniform distribution of the lymphocytes that's called deep cortex there is no lymphatic nodule in the deep cortex this is called paracortex and it is a thymus dependent area because it contains mostly majority of t cells the lymphatic nodules mainly contain the b lymphocytes the plasma blast and all they are b lymphocytes whereas in the paracortex we have only t lymphocytes coming to the medulla we have a cord of lymphocytes mainly the b lymphocytes and in between we have sinuses sinuses are nothing but the dilated vessels so cords which i am writing in between the white spaces are the sinuses these medullary sinuses unite with the unite and forms the efferent lymphatic vessels these are the sinuses which contains the lymphatic blood so you are also supposed to write the blood vessels in the capsule and the trabeculae there is represent the afferent vessels whereas in the paracortex we have an, a, a blood vessels called high endothelial venules they are nothing but the post capillary venules lined by cuboidal or columnar epithelium they are very important and they are rich in aquaporins uh, uh, receptors so that the uh, most of the fluids coming from the afferent lymphatic vessels will be drained directly to the blood vessel through these high endothelial venules and also the lymphocytes circulating the blood will enter the lymph node through these high endothelial venues which are mainly present in the paracortex i hope the explanation will help you to understand the structure of these lymph lymph node and thymus like the video share and subscribe to my channel thank you for watching